Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933 here, and in today's CCNA video practice exam, we've got a little bit of everything, so even if you're working on the NP, I think you'll find these questions helpful for a good solid re review. As always, we'll go through the questions pretty quickly, so we have plenty of time at the end of the video to go over the answers on live Cisco equipment. Also have some illustrations to go along with some of the answers today, so it's going to be a good training session here. Let's go ahead and jump into question one. You've assigned IP addresses to the Ethernet and serial interfaces on your router, and you've opened the interfaces. By default, and choose all that apply as always, which of the following route types will appear in your IP routing table? Which of those are you going to see? And for extra credit, give me the routing table code for that route type or types. Question two, what does an IP version 6 address beginning with 2002 and carrying a, f a slash 48 prefix indicate? That's a reserved IP version 6 address, but what is it reserved for? Question three, which of these is the default encapsulation running on a Cisco router serial interface? That should be a quick one. Let's head for question four. When you run the write erase command on the Cisco router, and we'll actually do that live here since uh, I hope you're not doing that at, uh, in your production networks a lot, you're, in, you're effectively emptying the contents of which of these? Is it RAM, ROM, NVRAM, Flash, or a combination thereof? And let's jump into question five. We've got some longer choices here, so I will try to be quiet for at least 15 seconds. Identify the true statements regarding incoming telnet connections on a Cisco router. Like I said, I'll hang here a little bit longer than usual. But as you can see, it's difficult for me to be quiet for 15 seconds. Okay, let's go back through those answers and let's start with question one. In this particular instance, as long as you assign the IP addresses to those interfaces, and then of course open them because on a Cisco router those interfaces are closed by default, you will see the connected networks, the directly connected networks. So B is the correct answer here, and it's simply the letter C in your routing table code, or your routing code table, that uh, that indicates a connected route. You will not see static or RIP version 1 routes unless you configure either static routes or that particular routing protocol. Bellman forward is a routing algorithm, it's not a route type, and of course none would be incorrect. So again there we're looking for connected routes. Now question two here, let me show you this illustration from my CCNA study guide. And this is a 6 to 4 tunnel. It's one of the methods we have of migrating from IP version 4 to IP version 6. And what you're doing is you're creating or, mer or excuse me, migrating to IP version 6 at the edge of your network, making these edge routers rather than starting in the center. The thing is we need those edge routers to be able to communicate and what's going to happen here is that this tunneling, this 6 to 4 tunneling is accomplished by taking an IP version 6 packet putting it into an IP version 4 packet for transport across the IP version 4 portion of the network and then this router will de-encapsulate it. So these are referred to as IPv6 islands. They are kind of sitting out there by themselves. That's a good name for it. And these edge routers are going to use that address prefix we talked about. And again, those are reserved for edge routers in 6 to 4 tunneling. The prefix begins with 2002. It's followed by the router's IP version 4 address in hex. So that's another good reason to know your hex conversions. And they carry a slash 48 prefix. So that is why we use, or when we use, that particular version 6 address. If you felt this one was deja vu, I have asked it in some of my other video practice exams uh, because it is an important one. We talk so much about PPP and frame relay uh, in all of my training courses and any other books you might have read. We do spend a lot of time talking about the features of those two encapsulations, but the default encapsulation for a Cisco router serial interface is actually C. It's HDLC. 
and one of the first things we do usually is change that to either PPP or frame relay. But it's important to remember that even though we talk about point to point protocol and frame relay so much in the course that the default is actually HDLC. Question four, what happens when you run the write arrays on a Cisco router? Well, we've got a little bit of time here and I'll go ahead and actually you'll get the uh, actual answer right away because I'm gonna run the write arrays command and any time that you enter a command like this, you know, hopefully you're going to get a little warning if you're doing something kind of serious. And you can see the actual warning that this Cisco router gives us is erasing the NVRAM file system will remove all files. Do you want to continue? Well, I'm going to go ahead and confirm that. And we'll probably just go ahead and jump out of this since we already saw the answer instead of going through the entire reload process. But again, you'll get a message as you reload you know that the NVRAM was prop was uh, erased and here's your other confirm erase of NVRAM is complete so I'll go ahead and reload that and we'll give it just a second here you get to reload requested system bootstrap etc and we'll just hang out here for a minute we've got one more question to go over and let's see how long it's going to be because sometimes when you reload it you will actually sometimes you'll get an answer and here it is this is what I wanted to show you because occasionally I'll get an email or a student ask me, well, it said the, the RAM was invalid. You know, and that, that sounds kind of close to corrupted, like there's something physically, you know, wrong with it. And there's nothing really wrong with it except we emptied it. And notice the rest of it does say possibly due to write arrays, but I know that that word invalid can uh, strike fear in your heart because it does make it sound like it's corrupted, but it's not. It's just empty, and that's because we just emptied it. So again, the write arrays command, is going to empty your non-volatile RAM. And your incoming connections on your Cisco router, we better know these, is pretty important, not just for the exams, but for the real world, because we use Telnet quite often. Going from top to bottom, they are disabled by default, thankfully, because we don't want just anyone Telnetting to our routers. You are going to configure the virtual terminal lines, the VTY lines, on a Cisco router. And you have five lines by default, zero through four. Uh, they are not put into privileged exec mode by default. By default, a user is going to be put into user exec mode, and then to get into enable mode or privileged exec mode, what they've got to do is enter a password, the enable password, if one is set. If one is not set, as you probably know, they can't get into privileged exec mode. There's also another command that you can set, and let me, we're not going to go through setup mode right here, but let me just go to another router on this particular pod and what we could do I'll go ahead and give it a host name put a couple of commands on here a couple of good home lab commands there as well as knowing those for the CCNA logging synchronous and exec timeout I do have them in another YouTube video and to configure that we're gonna set a one one password for the VTY line so we need login you are gonna see that message if you put login first but just go ahead and set the password and then you're fine and then if you want incoming Telnet users to be put into privilege exec mode when they authenticate with that password rather than user exec, the command is privilege level and you set a default level of 15 which is the highest. And now when a user Telnets into that particular router with that one password they will be put into privilege exec mode rather than user exec mode. So a lot of good practical stuff for you there as well. Again, I thank you for taking just a few minutes to watch today's video. Got well over 100 of them on our YouTube certification channel, so I hope you'll take advantage of those. Thanks again for watching. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933.